Let us consider together on this Sabbath day, this Lord's day, the first ten verses of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, the Apostle Paul has this to say to them and now to us. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons and daughters of disobedience. And in them you also once walked when you were living in them, but now you also put them all aside. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. A renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, Barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. This is the Word of God for me and you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And shall we pray? Oh God, the lights are now dim. And I ask that you might challenge each of us with how we live our lives today in going forth. It is in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that we offer this in each one of our prayers unto you. Amen. So, on this Sunday after Easter, I offer to our congregation this question. What do we do now? Where do we go from here? The hard work of Lent is behind us. The glow of Easter has faded. Are you aware? I'm confident I've shared this with you through the years. But the, the Sunday after Easter is often referred to as Low Sunday. It is just hard to top Easter Sunday. Easter, of course, is the highest, holiest day on the Christian calendar. The music on Easter Sunday is celebratory and triumphal. And on Easter Sunday, Many people make gathered worship a priority at the same time. In fact, looking back just to last week in our Easter Sunday here, I thought it was just beautiful because there were only a handful of people in this sanctuary last Sunday that I could not call by name, just a small handful of visitors. The vast majority of what we had in this sanctuary last Sunday were our own members, were our resident members. 
And we nearly filled the sanctuary with our own people. It's a wonderful glimpse into the potential vibrancy our church continues to have. It's quite different. The dynamics are quite different from when our children lead us in worship. When our children lead us in worship, we also nearly fill the sanctuary, but it's different because grandparents are coming from afar. It's different because we have so many people here who regularly participate in other churches, but their children are with us on Wednesday nights, and so we have all kinds of folks from the wider community who are here. When our children sing on Sundays, you really get a picture of what it would be like. What if several churches in our community just merged together? What if several churches in our community just became one and we had one good-sized community church when our children lead us in worship, you get a picture of what that would look like. And it's beautiful in its own right, no doubt. But last week, just seven days ago, we nearly filled this sanctuary with our own folks. Because a high percentage of our resident membership at the very same time made gathered worship a high priority in their lives. And you see what happens when we do that. So today is Low Sunday. It's quite different. It has a very different feel to it. It's been intense for weeks. We've had communion every Wednesday night. How marvelous and magnificent those worship gatherings have been in our church fellowship hall throughout the Lenten season. And then we transition from that to Monday, Thursday, and from that to Good Friday. And then, of course, the highest, holiest day indeed, Easter Sunday. But today, look around you. Today, the lights have dimmed. It feels very, very different in this place. Lent is behind us. Easter Sunday is behind us. The lights are fading. And now, church, what do we do? And now, church, how are we to behave? The Apostle Paul, perhaps unsurprisingly, the Apostle Paul says that we are to keep at it. No rest for the weary, I suppose. Indeed, this is what he says. Notice verse 5. Paul says, Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. Now, drop down to verse 8. Paul says to the Colossians in Asia Minor, Sometime during the 50s, probably, while he is in jail, probably in Rome, in verse 8. But now you also put them all aside. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Okay, drop down to verses 9 and 10. The apostle says, do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices. Now verse 10, and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. So what do we do now that Lent has passed and Easter has passed? What do we do now that the lights have dimmed according to the Apostle Paul? We 
according to the Apostle Paul, we keep on Lenting. We keep on Lenting. We continue to tend to the rough edges that are in our lives. So that's what Paul tells us to do. He says very practical things, uh, put to death immorality and in impurity and passion and evil desire. He says do not lie to one another. He gives us very practical things to do. But what I really want you to notice today is the very rich imagery that Paul employs in verses 1 and 2 and then verses 3 and 4. So notice verse 1 of Colossians chapter 3. Paul says, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Now, what does he mean when he says that we have been raised up with Christ? Clearly here, that is not a reference to our future resurrection, which of course is the central axis upon which Christian faith revolves. Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day, and at some point in the future, the church is still waiting for this glorious day, we too shall be raised from the dead, and we shall share in Jesus' resurrected state. That is the core of Christian faith. But Paul means something slightly different here. He doesn't appear to be speaking here of our future resurrection. Paul is rather mystical. And he suggests to us that in some sense we share in Jesus' resurrection before we share in Jesus' resurrection. That in some sense, put your mystical glasses on here, that in some sense we share in Jesus' resurrection and Jesus' resurrected state before we share in Jesus' resurrection and Jesus' resurrection state. He is using here baptismal language and baptismal imagery. He does it over in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12, but he elaborates even more in Romans 6, verses 1 through 5. Listen, if you will, to Romans 6, verses 1 through 5. Paul says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who die to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Listen to that, church. Verse 4. Therefore, we have been buried with Christ through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with Him in the likeness of His death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection. So that's a fuller version of what Paul is getting at, I think, in Colossians chapter 3, as well as Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. In some mystical sense, Paul says that as the body of Christ, we even share now in Jesus' resurrected state. And therefore, verse 10 Set your mind on things above, not on things that, on, that are on the earth. We are to keep our heads in the clouds, so to speak. We are to tease out. We are to be nourished, perhaps 
initially by this imagery here that somehow we participate in Jesus' resurrection before we participate in Jesus' resurrection. And we are to focus our mind on heavenly things, on spiritual things. We are indeed to do our best, as difficult as it is in this life, to resist the shiny objects and to focus on the spiritual realm, Paul says to the Colossians some 2,000 years ago, and it continues to be relevant to the church today. All right, now notice verses 3 and 4. Paul says, We share in Jesus' resurrection, even now, in some mystical sense, and we also share in Jesus' death, even now, in some mystical sense. So verse 3, For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Verse 4, when Christ who is our life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. Indeed, I don't profess to have it figured out on this Sunday morning. Paul's words here stopped me in my tracks last week. But just as we participate in Jesus' resurrection, we also participate in Jesus' death. We have died with Christ, you see. We continue to encounter here Paul's baptismal imagery from Romans chapter 6, but he adds to it. And he says that, in a sense... Christ is now hidden with God. We don't see Christ as we don't see God. There were people who saw Jesus the Christ who could have told us the inflection of His voice, the color of His eyes, the, 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 the height of His body, etc., etc. But no one sees Christ anymore he is, according to early Christian tradition, resurrected and ascended into the presence of God and Christ sits at the right hand of God. And in that sense, Paul says, Christ is hidden with God. Christ is hidden with God until He is revealed. And we are hidden with Christ as Christ is hidden with God, and when Christ is revealed, Paul is very eschatological here, when Christ comes again, when Christ is revealed, then quite literally, and not mystically, but quite literally, his followers shall be raised from the dead. Paul is high and lofty here. He's on a plane that I struggled to get to. But that seems to be what he's saying. That seems to be what he is suggesting. And I'd like you to think about that. And if you struggle with setting your mind on things above, right? If you struggle with so many of us do with too much social media or too much whatever our culture throws at us. Here is something you can set your mind on this week. Set your mind on things above. And just play with Paul here. Dialogue with Paul here. See if you can figure out what he's saying, but it's marvelous. It's magnificent. In some sense, we, as Jesus' followers, share in Jesus' own death, in Jesus' own resurrection, before the return of Christ and the resurrection of the dead. Huh. I am 
so pleased to report to you today. And I'd like you to share this with all your friends if you want to share some news about your pastor. I stand before you today seven days sober. Yeah. I have my seven day chip. I stand before you today seven days sober. I have not had a diet drink in the past seven days. Last Saturday I was meeting with God and I was meeting with Augustine. And I just had this impression that came over me as I was meeting with God and Augustine. I just said, Paul, you really need to work on this. It's just too much. I'm like my father. Except instead of a Miller Lite, I've got a Diet Coke in my hand. Now, no doubt a Diet Coke is an improvement from a Miller Lite, but still, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And I just decided, felt God saying to me, this is a rough edge in your life, Paul, and you need to work on it. So here's what I plan to do as the lights dim. The wind is behind us. The glory of Easter is behind us. It looks and feels like a low Sunday, doesn't it? It's the reason it's called low Sunday on the Christian calendar. When the lights dim, or as they dim, I'm going to continue to wint. And I find much inspiration in Paul's text here. No doubt Paul tells me what to do. He does. I mean, just look, listen again. Consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, dead to impurity, dead to passion, dead to evil desires and greed. And, and then he says, do not lie to one another. Don't lie to one another since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices. I mean, he, he tells me what to do. Very tangible things. He tells us what to do. But he does more than that here. He goes beyond that. And he tells me and you what our identity is as Christians. In some mystical sense, I'm playing with it now as I'm preaching, but in some mystical sense, I, as a believer in Jesus the Christ, as a follower of Jesus the Christ, I share in Jesus' death. Jesus died and I died. I died to sin. Jesus died for sin. I share in Jesus' pain and suffering and death. And in some mystical sense, I'm still trying to get there even as I'm preaching. In some mystical sense, I share as a Christian in Jesus' resurrection. As Jesus was raised from the dead, this new life that I have in Christ, I have been raised as well. And of course, so have you. So this reality of who I am as a Christian, this reality, as I set my mind on things above, and I ponder this, and I tease it out, and I play with it, and I try to understand it, it may just get me to eight days so. What about you? Amen. Oh,